Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. In this lesson, we are going to learn to solve system equations by substitution. In the previous lesson, we have learned to solve system equations by graphing. So let's do a quick recap. So here's the prior knowledge. Here are graphs of two equations in a system. Determine if each of these systems could be represented by the graph. Write down the reason. Be prepared to explain how you know. I would ask you to pause here and try to go through the first uh, four questions that related to graphing, and then you can come back to check your answers. For a, x plus 2y equals 8, x equals negative 5. And this is the graph on the right side. Well, if you think about it, x equals negative 5, it means it has to cross the x-axis. So it's supposed to be a vertical line, which yes, check mark, it, it is a vertical line. However, it's x equals negative 5, which means it's supposed to be on the negative side of x. And this graph clearly is not on the negative side of the x. So that cannot represent, uh, no, the graph for x equals negative 5 would be on the left side of the vertical axis, which is not what's shown. Okay, B. Well, immediately you see it's y equals negative 1. Well, that's supposed to be a horizontal line that crosses the y-axis. In this case, it does not work. C. 3x equals 8, well, that is x equals 8 thirds, which potentially could be the case. And then you see the next one, if you, ask, you do a little bit calculation, 3x plus y uh, equals 15, it's actually y equals negative 3x plus 15, which does mean it's a line that goes down. So potentially this could actually present. So here we go, yes, it's a vertical line to the right of the vertical axis. And then the other one actually has a negative slope and a positive y value. So it is uh, just like what it's shown. So C is a yes. D, y equals 2x minus 7, 4 plus y equals 12. So this one actually is y equals 8. Then again, it's a horizontal line. There's no way this could actually represent that. And the other case is 2x is a positive slope. So it actually goes up. And this is a negative 7. So it goes up from, the, from below the uh, the y-axis. So D does not work. Now let's get into today's lesson. The most basic way to solve a system is by graphing. But what if the situation are not whole, the solutions are not whole numbers, they're fractions? Then we can't graph fractions very precisely, which is why graphing is not going to give us the most accurate answers. So the most accurate answer is typically gotten from algebra. There are two algebraic methods we will learn and we will always write our answers as an ordered pair. So let's see this first method, which is called the substitution method. We substitute or solve for one of the variables. Here are the steps. First, isolate one of the variables in one of the equations. Choose the easiest equation and the easiest variable. Sometimes this step is done for you. So let's look on the right side. You can see x is already by itself. So that means this first step is already done. Step two, substitute the equation in step one into the other equation. Always use parentheses when substituting. Here's what it means by substituting. We have learned about the substitution property. Substitute means replace, which means you'll make something completely disappear and it's being replaced by something else. So x and 2y plus 1 are the same. So if we, have, we actually want to do the substitution, we are going to replace this x in the other equation. So 2, and then that x needs to be gone because it's being replaced by 2y plus one. And in this step, it already emphasized, always use parentheses because you are replacing x as a whole uh, by this 2y plus one. And then we're going to keep copying down the rest plus 4y equals 26. Now, this is an equation you can totally solve. It's only one variable. So step three is solve the resulting equation to find part of the solution. Well, because with this equation, you can only find the answer for y. So solve it. 4y plus 2 plus 4y equals 26. Keep combining like terms. So what I just did is distribution. Now I need to combine like terms. 8y plus 2 equals 26. Subtract 2 on both sides. 8y is 24. Divide both sides by an 8y equals 3. So it's part of the solution because we don't have the x yet, which is why here's the process again. Step four, substitute the answer from step three into one of the equations. It's actually better to, to put it into the one we 
created or the one that the variable is already isolated. So you see x is isolated and we just found y, so we can easily plug it in to find the x. So x equals 2 times 3 plus 1. Step five is solve the resulting equation to find the other part of the solution. So I can just calculate it. Two times three is a six plus one is a seven. Lastly, I need to write my answer as an ordered pair. An ordered pair is x comma y. So x in the front, which is a seven, y on the back, which is a three. Because a solution to a system is still a point on the graph. So that's why we can use a point looking kind of ordered pair to present the answer. That's an example with some steps. Now let's go through a few more examples. Example one, y equals two x minus one, minus one and y equals negative x minus four. Well, you can see both of the x are actually isolated. I mean, both of the, the y are actually isolated, which means you can choose to use either one equation to replace the letter y. So let's say I'm going to use the second equation which means wherever I see y, I need to replace it by negative x minus 4 in the other equation. So I'm going to need to replace that in the first equation. So that y on the left side is being replaced as negative x minus 4. So that is the substitution process equals 2x minus 1. Let's keep solving the equation. Subtract uh, 2x on both sides. So we got negative 3x minus 4 equals negative 1. And then add 4 on both sides, so negative 3x equals a positive 3 divided by negative 3 on both sides, x equals negative 1. But I'm not fully done, I only found x, which is only part of the solution. Now I need to put it back into the equation to find my y. I typically put it back into the equation where I uh, used to substitute. So, x equals negative 1, put it back in, y equals a negative x, so it's a negative sign of a negative 1. I'm replacing the x now with a negative 1, the minus 4. So that's actually a 1 minus 4, which is a negative 3, which means my final answer is x comma y, so it's negative 1 comma negative 3. That is example 1. Moving on, example 2. So for this one, you can see you kind of have two different options. Y is already just a y by itself. Of course, you have a negative sign in the front. But x is also just by itself. So you can either choose to isolate the x or isolate the y. I personally don't even want to have to deal with the negative sign. So I choose to isolate this x. So by isolation, it means I'm solving for it. So I'm trying to get x by itself. I'm going to subtract 3y on both sides, which gives me x equals negative 3y minus 11. As soon as I isolated my x, I'm going to need to replace the x in the other equation by this whole little, little representation. So it's 2, and then since x is the same as negative 3y minus 11, I can replace that x with negative 3y minus 11. Then minus y equals 6. Negative 6y minus 22 minus y equals 6. Negative 7y minus 22 equals 6. Add 22 on both sides. We got negative 7y equals 28. By both sides by a negative 7, y equals negative 4. As soon as I found y, I can actually replace it into my other equation. So now it's, I'm doing another substitution because y is the same as negative 4. So wherever I see y, I'm going to replace it with negative 4. So x equals negative 3 times my y is negative 4. Even in this process of the substitution, I am still putting it inside parentheses so that I'm careful with my size. The whole thing is negative 3 times negative 4 is a positive 12 minus 11, which is a 1. Final answer, 1, comma, negative 4. That is example 2. Moving on, example 3. Things are getting a bit more complicated. Here's the thing. Even though you see fractions, you can still see y and y, which means the y's are already isolated. So you can use either one to replace it. Since the last time I used the second equation to do my substitution, well, this time I'm going to use my first to do the substitution to kind of show you either one works. So I see a y in here. Well, in the other equation, y is the same as negative four, uh, 7 fourth x minus 3. So I'm going to use that to substitute the y in the other equation. So I'm going to get negative 7 fourth x minus 3 equals negative 1 half x plus 2. Now we have an equation, uh, a fraction equation. 
So we got to clear the fraction as the first step. So I'm going to multiply it while it's a 4 and a 2. So I'm going to multiply everything by a 4 since that is a common denominator. And make sure you're multiplying on everything, including the number that are just looking like a number with nothing else. Okay, so negative 7 4 times a 4 is a negative 7x. Negative 3 times a 4 is a minus 12. Negative 1 half times a 4 is a negative 2x. And then 2 times 4 is a 8. And I add 2x on both sides. So you got negative 5x minus 12 equals 8. I had 12 on both sides. Negative 5x equals 20 divided both sides by a negative 5. x equals a negative 4. And then I'm going to do my substitution again because now wherever I see x, I can replace it. Wherever I see x, I can replace it with a negative 4. So I'm going to put it back in here. I see an x, I'm going to replace it with negative 4. To find my y. So y equals negative 7 fourth times my x is a negative 4 minus 3. Negative 7 fourth times a negative 4 is a positive 7 minus 3. It is a 4. Final answer negative 4, 4. That is example 3. Example 4. You have two options again. You can either choose to just completely get rid of this 21 and then get x by itself. Which does mean you need to actually use the, uh, the fractions to do your calculation, which is okay. Or you can choose to isolate this x because that does not even have a number attached to it, just has a negative sign. So I'm going to actually try to isolate this one. Minus 16 on both sides, and then I got a negative x equals negative 4y minus 16. And then to I get rid of the negative sign, I can just divide both sides by a negative 1. My x is a 4y plus 16. Now I can replace my x in the other equation. So I see x in the other equation. I'm going to replace it by whatever is the same as, which is 4y plus 16. So we got 21 times 4y plus 16 equals 48 minus 12y. Let's keep solving. That is 84y plus 336 equals 48 minus 12y. Keep going, add 12 by on both sides. And you can subtract 30, 336 on both sides. 12y is moved to the left, 336 moved to the right. You got 96y that equals to 384. And that divide both sides by a negative 6, uh, by a 96, y equals 4. Afterwards, you can replace wherever you see y so that you can actually find the x. You see y is right here. I can replace that with a 4 to find my x. I see x equals 4 times 4 plus 16, which is 16 plus 16, which is 32. The final answer, 32, 4. And again, you can totally choose to replace the first equation. You can totally choose to get this first equation to be... Um, let's see, x equals 48 over 21, um, x minus 12y over 21, which simplifies to be, that's, um, a 16 over 7x minus, oh, not 7x, sorry, 7 minus, that's a 12 over 21, which is a 4 over 7y. And then you can choose to put that into the other equation. It just now you need to clear the fraction to finish solving the other one. Either way works. Either way works. As long as you're very careful with the signs. That's example four. Moving on. Last one. Example five. Well, this time, if you want to isolate anything, seems a bit more complicated. So you can make your choice. Do you want to do x or do you want to do y or which equation you want? That's a choice that you need to make. So... I see this x at least has the smallest number, so I'm going to try to isolate that x. So I have 2x minus 4y equals negative 18. I'm just copying it down, and I'm adding 4y on both sides. I've got 2x equals 4y minus 18. Then I divide everything separately by a 2. So x equals 2y minus 9. Oh, great. I actually don't even have any fractions. So, well, choosing a smaller number will make the numbers, even if we have fractions, it's going to make them smaller anyway. So that's always a, best, a better choice. 
So now I can look for the x in the other equations and replace it with 2 my 2y minus 9. So it's 5 times 2y minus 9 plus 8y, which equals to negative 36. Let's keep solving. 10y minus uh, not 9, minus 45 plus 8y equals negative 36. So we have 18y minus 45 equals negative 36. Let's add both sides with a 45. 18y equals a 9. So y equals 1 half. Now that we found y, we can actually put it back in to find my x. x equals 2 times 2 1 half minus 9, which is 1 minus 9, which is a negative 8. Final answer, 1 half. Uh, no, not 1 half. My x is a negative 8. So it's actually negative 8, comma, 1 half. So sometimes you might be like, uh, wait, well, when it's a complicated question, which uh, variable should we isolate? One, you can check for multiples. So if you have, for example, this one, if you also notice it's a 2, a 4, and an 18, well, that's actually going to make things easier because every single one of these numbers is an even number. So when you kind of simplify the fractions, it's going to make things a bit better. So if check for multiples. And if you don't see any of those, well, just choose the smallest coefficient. In this case, that's the reason why I chose the x, because 2 is the smaller coefficient. So uh, I'm a, even if I'm ending up with fractions, I may still get some fractions that are not big. So that is example 5. That is everything for this solving system equation by substitution lesson. Thank you.